So where's the office back at Division? The in office, baby. Going out. What's up, Buckeye Nation? You're tuned in to the Buckeye Cast. Sex fires. Wow! In the end zone! Oh, what a catch! Jeremy Rucker! Give me that! Fields to throw. Steps up. Delivers deep down the field. He's got a receiver. A live air touchdown. Put that! Now here's your host, Joe Warwick. The Ohio State Buckeye. What is up? We are back. Back and better than ever, you know. Trying to hit you with some more content because uh, what else is there to do? As always, subscribe, follow. We're getting ready to fire up for Season 5. We're kind of waiting on an announcement when the season may actually start, you know, the actual football season. So we'll launch the new season in accordance with that. Um at the supply store, hit the buckeyecast.com. We have masks, we have face masks, uh, all kinds of designs. I just uploaded like a dozen new designs yesterday. People are crushing those. I had a shitload of orders last night, so those are all buckeye themed. Uh, you got the Blocko, you got the Script Ohio, uh, the Beat Corona shirts or uh, masks are really good. Um, Sean, have you uh, found one that you like yet? You know me, I'm a simple man. I like the script Ohio. Yeah, keep it simple. I like that. I'm a sucker for that. Yeah. Sucker for the script Ohio. Aren't Gets me every time. Yeah, yeah. Right in, right in the, uh, the old bread basket. Mm. So, as always, we got the promo code 25% off TBCSS25. Use that when you check out. Add that to, the, uh, to your cart. And boom, 25% off. We also have some uh, form-fitting masks. You might want to check those out. Those are a little tighter. Uh, They're only in black, though. We don't do a design on those. Those are just, they come in a pack of three. But only 35 bucks for a pack of three. And they're really snug around your your fucking face. Hit the site. Uh, Sean, do we have any uh, bourbon to discuss this evening? No, I'm just back to my well bourbon. My Buffalo Trace. Oh, that's never a well bourbon. That's an excellent bourbon. That's top shelf. That's enough. where that's where my well goes. Mm-hmm. You know what I found online today? I, I get these emails from these various liquor sites. Uh, Elijah Craig actually has a bunch of different versions. They have like a 23-year. They have a 15-year. And they're relatively affordable. I thought about throwing. I think the the fifteen or the ten was like sixty bucks. I thought about throwing that a bang. I don't mind their regular stuff, whatever yeah. years that is. That's yeah. That's just a regular I small that, batch. I put that right there with this uh, Buffalo Trace. I don't know yeah. Buffalo Trace is nice. Yeah, you can't beat it, man. I think Buffalo's even better than Eagle. Personally, I'm a huge Eagle fan. Yeah, I had to rearrange and reorganize my bar. Now the entire top shelf is complete, completely bourbon and scotch. That's it. It covers the entire top shelf. This economy, these prices coming down, you might, uh, I don't know, alcohol stocks are probably going through the roof. Yeah, probably. People <laughs> sitting home and ordering bottle after bottle. Right. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper than drinking out, man. Definitely, and you can't go out to drink anyways. Oh, did you hear um, Gronk just got traded to Tampa? I thought he retired. I didn't he know did. he was traded. Yeah, he was retired all last year, but yeah, Tommy got him got him out of New England and uh, off of the the party stage. So now, uh, I'm guessing he'll be hanging out in Ebor and and Longdale, Mabry. Mons- I don't know. I don't know. 
Tom probably already has a place somewhere down, you know, Santa Bell or. Oh, he's renting uh, Jeter's Marco. house. <clears throat> oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's already bitching because people can like, uh, you know, obviously boat right up to the back of his house <laughs> or paddleboard or whatever, jet ski up to the back of his house. Oh, he's not used to that shit. <laughs> but poor Tom. Yeah, I think he'll get by. So yeah, Gronk, Gronk just showed up in Tampa yesterday and uh, hide the women and children. Well, we'll see if uh, see if they have a football season. Yeah. That would be so Tampa. No football season. You guys got Gronk and fucking Brady. <laughs> Sorry, maybe next year. If there's no football season, do these guys get paid? And like the basketball players, they get paid their like full contracts and things like that. I would think so. The NFL PA might have something to say about that if they tried to to short him. But isn't 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 a lot of that contract? Uh, no, I guess not. A lot of it is. That's what they always try and go for is revenue sharing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you don't have games on TV, you definitely lose that TV uh, contract money. So yeah, that, that's that's a big one. Which is huge. I mean, that's yeah. That's where the money is. Exactly. Yeah, you're not making a lot at the gate and, you know, concessions. Fuck, the Buckeyes, what do they say? I think they make five to seven million, depending on the home game, on just concessions and, and tickets and everything. So I I imagine maybe an NFL game similar because you have like 30,000 less people. So. You got about eighty thousand more beers, though. Yeah, people are way cranked up. So, what's on the uh, quarantine menu this week? Anything exciting? Get caught up on Tiger King updates. Yep, uh, check that out. The follow up. Yeah, it was a little meh, but right. always a little entertaining. Why can't anybody get an interview with Joe in jail, like over the phone? That seems like an I know. easy thing to Where's pull. the Barbara Waters of today? Barbara Waters would be sitting in that jail with like Charles right. Manson and shit. Right, that's true. Oprah. Get Oprah in there. Carol fucking Baskin. That bitch killed her husband. Yeah, she did. <laughs> we all know that. Yeah, not a oh, lot. Cool new. cat and kittens out of there. <laughs> Bitch killed her husband. Yeah, I want to see uh, if anything comes from this uh, reinvestigation of of that murder, but doubt it. That's why I don't ever plan on getting really rich. So no one wants to kill me. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it worked. Yeah, same here. The plan is working nicely. So, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, a little recruiting update. We're going to talk about the NFL draft. Uh, this is Wednesday night, so the draft is tomorrow night. We'll give you some quick opinions there, so get yourself lubed up for that. Uh, and then we'll talk some 2021 Buckeye draft prospects. Who uh, who on this Buckeye squad going into this football season will be an NFL prospect next year? And we might mix in some potpourri at the end of tidbits and whatnot. So uh, today we learned that uh, Jalen Gill entered the portal. He's in there and uh, stuck his foot Out of nowhere, what? Yeah, that, we kind of saw it coming, in my opinion. He hasn't had a lot of action. Uh, he'll have, he had like a one game last year where he had a nice play for a touchdown, but it was in garbage time, you know. Yeah, but I thought that was just because of the depth. And then we had, you know, we lose the guys this year. I thought, you know, I thought this was a year that Jalen Gill was going to step in and take the role that DeMar and McCall, McCall never could. Mm -hmm. um, I really, hey, go to our last week's uh, semi-draft. I took right. Jalen Gill as my third receiver. That. I was going to mention that. <laughs> yeah, I think that room is just chock full, man. And right now... I think the expectation is uh, 
you need to make a splash or do something to show the coaches before year three. You know? Well, and you know, and, and part of it, I think, is like I text you. Does that still exist? I, I think that Demario McCall and Gil, you know, they were, you know, recruited to be H backs, and that position's kind of went away. I mean, yeah. KJ Hill wasn't the H back like uh, Curtis Samuel was. No, no, it was like a whole different position. Yeah, it's kind of molded into the the slot receiver because they never even run those jet sweeps anymore. You know, I know. So maybe they would if they had somebody fast in there. Like maybe it'd be interesting to see if Garrett Wilson will will do any of that. He's much faster than than KJ for sure. Um, or if they get Demario in there, they they always said last year they had a package of plays specifically for Demario. They just didn't get to it. Yeah, because they had to be up by what eighty. <laughs> I don't like, know if they why. They went up by eighty. They'd right. be put in the Demario package. I mean, right. You should have been able to touch the waters with pretty much every package you have last year. Yeah. Well, you had the Tate package a few years ago. That worked swimmingly. Kept, and, yeah, they tried. They tried that a little bit too often. <laughs> it kept him around, didn't it? <laughs> really worked. But yeah, we'll see. Um, I do like moving Garrett Wilson to the receiver, but uh, to the slot receiver position, uh, that's intriguing to me. But um, we'll see if he can fill KJ's shoes. I, I am uh, happy for Gill. I think he probably needs to get out and and visit somewhere, go somewhere um, where he can be the man. I, th- I think the depth really hurt him, and he just didn't show enough, you know. And again, you know, we talked about it earlier. Uh, the, these small guys don't seem to, to get much of a, a look at Ohio State, right? You know, Dontre Wilson, uh, DeMario, Gill. I could probably think of some others, but... Um, those jump to mind, you know, these guys that come in a little light, but they're fast as shit, got all the moves, but uh, just can't can't find the time. Hey, I'm not 100% sure what it is, because even when you see them in their limited packages and that, they look pretty electric. Right. They look like, I mean, anytime Run DMC is in there, he looks pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe they don't know the playbook. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, Bobby Carpenter was on the radio today, and he was saying that that Gill's a good kid, never an issue. He's you know a Columbus area kid, uh, no problems uh, character wise, and um, he thought maybe he just didn't have the sense of urgency to kind of um, he kind of wait was waiting for his shot instead of going and taking it, you know, where at Ohio State. You don't just get anointed a position because you've been there three years. You've got to go show, right? So right, but still, without I could see him being worried if there was a spring football or something, but there wasn't. I mean, well, that probably hurt him too. Imagine, you know, if if he shows out in the spring game and has a great camp, maybe that changes things. Maybe he jumps up a slot on the depth chart or something. You know, it's kind of bad timing for him. I don't know, with his, with his years there, I would almost say you'd pencil him in as the fourth receiver. Yeah, that's what I would have expected. But when you bring in four, you know, the four studs, as fresh four horsemen, exactly. You know, shit. I don't know. He probably wasn't really expecting that. <laughs> He's like, "Oh fuck, these guys well, are bigger and faster than me." I certainly wish that guy well, and sure. you know, he could go to a, he could go to a Purdue, mm-hmm. Indiana, and make a difference. Definitely. 
Yeah, and then we also heard, we've heard rumors, I'm not sure how accurate they are, but uh, we're also hearing that Justin Hilliard might transfer out and finish his career elsewhere. We were, we were suggesting uh, Rutgers um, and play for Coach Shiano out there. Um, I don't know. I think he could, he could probably go anywhere. I think his time's going to be limited at Ohio State for sure, his number of snaps. And he was with Shiano. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if he's going to, you know, if he wants to get out and play big-time football and really showcase his talents, I wouldn't blame him for going to Rutgers. Yeah. Oh, fuck, he's probably had five defensive coordinators in his time. <laughs> right. I mean, he probably, he goes back, he goes back to fickle days. And he was hurt and... Yeah. Yeah. Lucky to get that sixth year, but um uh, not sure it's gonna be in a buckeye uniform, unfortunately. So best to those guys. As we know, these uh scholarship limits have a way of working themselves out and this is one step closer to getting down to the eighty five. Um still have plenty of time to get there, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, recruiting update. Jumping on, it's, it's every week, man. It, it's it's uh, amazing what the Buckeyes can do just sitting on their couches at home. Uh, last week, they get the DN, Tumisi Adelaye from IMG. He's originally from Texas, but uh, attends IMG Academy down here in Bradenton. 6'3", 240. Uh, this guy's a high four star. Again, somebody needs to explain to me how an, a nine seven eight nine is a four star. I, I still don't understand these rating systems, and I have a problem with it. Anyway, uh, to me, say uh, committed a week ago today. Nice get for the Buckeyes, and we just keep racking up studs. Uh, That's a huge get. That right. kid is. And and he's full of confidence and piss and vinegar, and he gets it. I think. Yeah, the first D end and or second D end in this class. I always forget about Jack Sawyer because he's been with us for so long. But yeah, uh, and he's smart too. I've heard a few interviews with him already, and kid is is on it. So it really. sounds like that. JC uh, Latham's his boy too. Yeah, yeah, they're super tight, and. Uh, and Tumise says he's going to be a big recruiter for the Buckeyes, so he's got a few boys down there that he can work on. Well, that gets us up to, what, 17 spots? I mean, holy, jeez, yeah. it's it's April, mm-hmm. and I, what do we got, six spots left? Yeah, and, and if, if they keep the early signing period in December, like they've, they've been doing, if they don't push it back because of the Rona, then... These guys are just gonna, we're gonna be locked and stocked, you know, until that that next signing period. I mean, you're always gonna have one or two fall off. We've seen that every year. It sucks, but it's gonna happen. You know, we don't. It is, but you know, I I read an article uh, on that to me. Uh, I don't know if it was on Eleven Warriors or where it was, but um, he said like this group is very cohesive. Like they mm-hmm. all want to play together. They all want to be elite. They yeah. So. I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. And the Buckeyes got a nice little pipeline going with the Texas kids. It's doing all right for us, even though he's at all IMG. Those, all those Texas kids put out, man. <laughs> they do. Yeah. And those IMG kids. I mean, technic- I think Cavazos is from Texas. So, yeah. Is he? Yeah. You got Garrett Wilson. I mean, we could go on and on. J.K., Baron Browning, Okuda, you know, just the recent guys getting loaded up there. And then again, this week, we get our guy uh, Jansen Dunn out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, DB. They got him listed as an athlete. You're a hell of an athlete. Um, he's number ranked number 248, according to 247, but this kid is 
jumping up the rankings every time they come out with a new uh reset of the rankings he's sliding up 100 spots so oh yeah don't be surprised if he's up there by the time it's all said and done in the top 100 62178 nice and long uh throw some pounds on him uh they got him ranked as a four star be inter- interesting to see if uh Kerry Combs can move him down the corner permanently or if uh if safety is the way they go there. How tall is he? Six two. He had offers from Bama, uh Arkansas, Baylor, BC, a uh, monster list. Yeah, that, that kid is going to be, I mean, from everything I read about him, I can't say it's been mm-hmm. a ton, but. So, yeah, we really loading up on the secondary, too. Uh, we've got, well, we needed it. We've had some drop-off. We just had a couple kids get kicked out of the program. Well, yeah. Uh, that were going to be contributors. That was a big problem, um, yeah. Was that our fourth DB, looks like? Yeah. And we're still not that? done. We're still going after that Kamara Wilcoxon that decommitted from Florida, and a few other guys, too. So Buckeyes are still in the mix for for some secondary help, and D-line, for that matter. So definitely not finished there. I saw that number one uh, kid decommitted from Clemson. Yeah, uh, Corey Foreman, the D-end. That was uh, somewhat surprising, but I didn't know this until yesterday, but Clemson apparently has this one of those rules like uh, D'Antonio did it at Michigan State where if, if you visit another school, then you, they're pulling your offer. And so Clemson... I think, the, I, I, to be fair, I think D'Antonio's rule didn't apply if you were a four-star, though, or higher. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was Gavin Cuppy he, he hit with that one. So, uh Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Dabo, basically the kid had to decommit. I'm not sure if he just wants to visit other places, kind of get all of his visits done just to enjoy the, the process, or if he actually does not want to go to Clemson because he's from L.A., you know. So word originally when he first decommitted was that some of his family members wanted him to stay local you know, to L.A., but uh, he's, the rumor mill is saying that he wants to visit places like Bama, LSU, possibly the Buckeyes, so I'm sure everybody has picked up the phone and reached out to him. We'll see. I think it'll tell you wherever he takes his visits, it'll tell you how serious he is about staying at home. But I was kind of surprised that Clemson would have that, uh, uh, no visit policy because the Buckeyes sure don't you know we don't need to be hard and fast and, and no just, but if but you don't but you quietly do um, well yeah it's if, not if, something if, you if, encourage if, you know it, cause, because we've been burned with it and I, and I think we try and look out for it when a kid commits to us you know say we get a top rated running back right. uh, which we have in the past and He's still going around kicking the tires everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Then you know what? We're, then we're not fully committed to you either, kid. And so we're trying to go out there and get other kids. Did that happen recently? I don't recall that. Yeah. <laughs> Deja vu all over again. In the same fucking It is. Year. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll see. I, I know the Buckeyes will take him. Not sure we really need him, need him. But uh, when the number one player in the class... After I, I, I think Jack Sawyer is still number one in the class. By the he way, he used to be number one. Yeah, I, we're probably splitting hairs, honestly. But uh, when the number one player, quote unquote, in the class is available, you definitely hit him up and and try and work on him. So I'm sure Larry Johnson's already all over it. Although the kid does have a Clemson tattoo already, so a, a tiger. I don't, I don't know if it says Clemson, but it's a tiger. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Clemson tiger. 
Anyway, uh, we've seen that go south for a few uh, Buckeye recruits in the past. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, who's the kid, the lefty quarterback from Maslin? A few years ago that we ended up yanking his offer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Tate, Tate has the block O tattoo. Yeah, I mean, he wanted to be, um, mm-hmm. but that was he was more Myers guy. Danny was, just... was it Danny Garcia? Was that the kid from Maslin? Maybe. I said it emphatically, so it must be true. Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, that's your recruiting update. We'll see what happens. I, imagine, imagine if we get up to twenty five uh, commits by the time the season starts. Yeah, we're done. You guys uh, enjoy the scraps, whatever's left over. Yo, I, see, I, this is going so well. I'm, I'm worried it's going so well. Well, yeah, um, we're going to lose we'll one a or couple two. Sp- I want to leave a couple spots open for some kid that was a three star that has a senior season, and everyone's like, "Oh shit!" Mm-hmm. Exactly. Leave some spots open for a couple of them late bloomers or those or those big time players that want to wait till the end, like uh, the kid from Clemson. Oh shit! Breaking news: Buckeyes get their first commitment for class of twenty twenty two. Oh really? Four star corner Jair Brown from New Orleans. Ooh. Going into the dirty, dirty south. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I don't know how he's a four star. I thought they hadn't ranked any players yet. Um, I think, um, uh, I think one outlet has. I don't know if it's Scout or ESPN or, but it, it might even be two four seven their own rankings. Okay, they got the. You don't, yeah. you don't do the composite. Yeah, they don't have the composite yet. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Was the. They do have the regular ranking. We got him at a, a 92, um, 16th ranked corner, player 122 nationally. So definitely a stud there. Pulling somebody out of a DB out of the dirty, dirty. Bama and LSU's backyard? Wow. Whoa. Come on up, buddy. Yeah. Take that. With a big boom coming from down south. That's huge. I wonder when we're going to start getting off in this 2022. Yeah, he was born in Cincinnati. Lived there uh, until he was four and still has a lot of family in that area. So there's the connection. There's oh, always nice. a connection. To to make to get a pull like that, there almost has to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. From New Orleans? Have we ever got a kid from New Orleans? I can't think of anybody from the whole state, man. We don't pull people out of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. That just doesn't happen. Uh, I feel I feel like we had one Louisiana kid a couple years ago. Hmm. I forget who it was. I could be wrong. That's that is that's tough sledding down in those parts. Yeah. I, when do they come out? Oh. And I wonder uh, how the how we're going to affect uh, the the rankings for like composite rankings. None of these kids, you know, our football season is going to be delayed. All the camps are. You know, where most of these kids going into their senior years that are like these highly touted recruits, mm-hmm. none of them are at these football camps doing these things. Um, a lot of that stuff's probably either going to be postponed or shut down through the summer in different parts of the uh, country. I think it's um, it's going to be tough to evaluate players this year, tougher than usual. You might still have the regular slate of games, but you're not going to get to see them I don't think it's much in the camps going, you know, big on big, one on one uh, against right. the best in the country. Yep. Yeah, um, Jonathan Wells was from uh, Louisiana. It's the only recent Buckeye I can find. But yeah, I am. I'm really curious how they're going to start doing these rankings when there won't be any camps probably this year. Is that what you just said? Yeah. <laughs> I was listening. Yeah. No, just uh, the camps, all the other stuff, the workouts, the things these kids are doing. Um, it's just there's no exposure right now. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and, and you wonder, this is going to be, I, you know, the the least recruiting data that you're going to have yeah. on these kids in, in a long time, frankly. Yeah, that's why, to me, it's a really good thing that we are ahead of the game on this 2021 class because we're going to need all the time in the world to evaluate 22. You know? Yeah. You're going to need every last minute to to evaluate those guys for next year. Well, it's just your your offers to them are going to come in late, and then you risk the thing of kids. Yeah. You know, your offer didn't come in, and they already jumped on someone else because yep. you weren't on their radar yet. Exactly. Um you know, but next year might be a year where the kids realize that. And so, you know, recently we've seen so many kids, you know, um, with with the early um, letter of intent. Maybe maybe next year is going to be a little bit different where you see a lot of people uh, waiting. Just, you know, yeah. if the data is slow coming in, like, hey, make sure I got all my options in front of me. Right. But think about this. If they push. Well, by December, you should know, I think. Right. But think about. This, if there are no camps up and then, say, the football season starts on time or a little late for high schools, then they push back, the NCAA pushes back or completely removes the early signing period in December, and they just go with the old system of just February, or maybe they even push that back a couple months, like um, April is is now... So then that compresses. So no one can early enroll. Right, I guess that kind of does, unless unless you commit before then. I don't, you'd have to. They'd have to do some kind of a system where they allow people to to send in their national letter of intent. Well, they used to do that. I mean, people would right. enroll early. So there's, yeah, just go back to the way it was, whatever, for a year. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, but then that still compresses the 22 class, you know? So if you're put, pushing back the 21s to February, March, or April, I don't know. That might affect the 22s and their camps and stuff like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's going to be interesting how this shit shakes out. Um, but... We're in we're in the driver's seat here. We only got room for probably seven more dudes. I don't know if we'll get up to twenty five for the uh, twenty one class. They still got some big names up in there that are sure do. Yeah, it's it's already a freaking amazing class. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, if they if they put the rest if the rest of the guys are just fillers and it's that's not going to be the case, no. this would be an amazing class. Yeah, we're already at almost three hundred points as a class, and nobody. I don't. I don't remember. The, there might be one other time that somebody hit three hundred as a as a class in the twenty four seven history. Probably Clemson last year. No, uh, I don't. I don't remember when it was. It might have been Florida. One of those Urban Meyer classes at Florida um, in the late 2000s might have been one of them. But, um, yeah, so we're going to easily eclipse 300 and probably get up into the 340s. So that's a, that's a monster. That's an all-timer. It looks like Kerry Combs still knows how to commit, right? He hasn't, he hasn't been uh, laying back. I mean, again, Ohio State, they just they fall into it. It's like the per- the perfect tires always right around the corner. Yep. Exactly. You know, whether it's Meyer today, um, we just have to make sure we keep Coach Mick. Gosh, I hope Coach Mick's a lifer. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to know who is um, next in line for not just Coach Mick, but like Larry Johnson. Um, his his number one assistant just went to Fordham just a week or two ago. So, you know, who else is out there that's a D-line 
you know, guru like Larry Johnson. I'm, I'm not sure there is a guy out there like that. Uh, not that I'm aware of. That just like that specialized in yeah. the D line, right? And been doing it for so uh, uh, long. That's a thing. He's been doing it forever. Well, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's that kind of that guy that went to Fordham. Maybe if if, if Johnson thought real highly, I'm going to say, kid, you go out there and do it yourself now. I'll tell you everything I can. Now you got to run the thing, run that unit. And go out there, and get yourself a couple of years, and then come back. I don't know. Of course, that kid probably aspires to bigger and better. There's not many people that aspire to, hey, I would just want to be a D-line coach. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Brian Hartline doesn't want to be just a wide receivers coach the rest of his life either. <laughs> so, I don't know, Brian. It's a good life, man. It's a pretty good life you got. <laughs> Brian Hartline. Yeah. If it's good I work guess. if you can find it. But I don't know. I see Brian Hartline as the Buckeyes receivers coach forever. Brian Day, at least next 20 years. Then figure out what you got to do. You're young, Hartline. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you might be 30, 32. I think it's like 35 or something like that. I don't know. But yeah. Do this gig for a decade. Yeah, he's going to be looking at a passing game coordinator position upgrade soon. Then maybe OC. What you do is you easy men do it like a co-OC, but you're still wide receivers coach. Something like that. Sure, yeah. You just kind of make a progression out of it. But eventually he wants to be, he'll be an OC. You know, you can make him passing game coordinator here. In the next year or two, just to to give him a bump in pay. I don't know though. The guy, what could strike me is he would do this uh, for the long term. Is he's always been a receiver, and now he's only coached receivers, and he's just so passionate about receivers. Maybe he's got passion about the rest of the game too. But man, his passion with wide receivers shows shows brightly, and maybe that's what he wants to do. Is work with these guys and make the best receivers ever. He's got a good start so far. Yeah, we can only hope. He does have a new house in Columbus, so and uh, Lauren Nitus is friends with him, and he's always talking about how he's like out and his, he's got like a huge property, and he's out there, you know, clearing land and fucking. Running ATVs all over and all this stuff. So, um, seems like he's he's in Columbus for a long time. Yeah, he's le- why wouldn't you be? It's I the mean, perfect gig. He's legend. Yeah, he he gets paid well. Not only that, but he played. How long was he in the NFL? Almost a decade. Yeah, getting NFL money. Right. And he doesn't seem stupid to me. So I, I bet you Brian Hartline is doing pretty good. For sure. Yeah, so let's uh, let's jump into this uh, 2020 draft real quick. We're just going to run through where guys are projected to go. We're not going to break down every fucking if and. Well, let's and... see. Well, let's see. <laughs> so we got uh, round one, pick two. You got Chase Young going. Um, let's not forget uh, former Buckeye Joe Burrow going number one overall. And then you got J- Jeff Okuda going number three. Now, this is where I get a little iffy. Stop right there. How what? sick is that? Yeah. Joe Burrow, Chase Young, Jeff Okuda, one, two, three. Yeah. Buckeyes are putting some talent. Yep. It, it's It's inexplainable inexplicable whatever it's just it's it's amazing and it's it's only getting better it seems so that's just crazy okay go on fourth is where you said it gets oh here we go yeah round two is where i start to have some issues with these projections because you got jk uh going at pick number 42 overall so that's uh 10 picks into the second round 
Um, I would argue that I believe J.K. is a late first guy, early second. I think before pick number 10, though. I See, I disagree. You know, I don't, uh, unless you're a generational running back, and again, we spoke about this earlier, J.K. Dobbins obviously had one of the best uh, seasons ever for a Buckeye running back. Um, he's he's a stud. Uh, I think he, I don't know, not enough good things I can say about the guy. But I don't think he is necessarily a generational running back like uh, Zeke Elliott, like uh, Adrian Peterson, like a, like a girly, one of these guys that you take high. Frankly, I think Zeke was taken too high. Um, I just don't like taking running backs that high. Um, they they get beat on too much. The longevity isn't there. And so, I I mean, poor J.K. Dobbins, second round. I think that's, uh, <laughs> I think that's a compliment to uh, what he did and, and what he is. I think he's an amazing running back. But, again, I just think the, the value at that position – you can't. You got other things of, of higher need that you need to fill out before that. Yeah, but my point is, you know, looking at some of these projections for the guys that are going late in the first round, you got you got freaking guys like uh, uh, who is this guy? Jalen Ragor from TCU is a wide receiver. Never heard of him. We probably played him. I don't remember him. You got, I don't know, Jordan Love, quarterback from Utah State, going here at number twenty-four. You kidding? Yeah, because we don't want because we don't watch that trash football out there. But those guys might be absolute studs, and I'm guessing oh. they are. I'm guessing they had good combines, and and it's a passing league. That's why receivers are going and running backs don't. You got to be just. You got to be a beast like Zeke or Gurley or one of these guys to to go early in drafts anymore. It's still like a freak of nature. Dobbins is, Dobbins is going to outwork you, out hustle you. He's, he's probably tougher than you, but he's not an absolute freak like those other guys. All right, so I'm going to dig in here. Do you who do you take a, first? Okay, Jonathan Taylor or J.K. Jonathan Taylor. For real? Why? Uh, you know, I got like a man crush on Jonathan Taylor. Um, but why? Don't, I mean, look, look, don't at the tape. look what Jonathan Taylor did. I mean, and it's done. Yeah, we shut him down, but we got a roster full of full of dudes. He's got a bunch of bumps. That dude is absolutely amazing. Can do absolutely everything you ask him to do. He can catch the ball. He can return kicks. He can run the ball. He can do everything. Um, he's got a great head on his shoulders. I don't know if you ever heard him speak. Um, I, I think he's the best running back in the draft. I, I go Taylor. Hmm. Wow. Uh, let me know the next time he does something in a big game. And well, guess what? The uh, NFL is full of teams with dudes on defense. Well, he's got. He's going to have dudes on his side too. Mm-hmm. He better hope. I got him going to the Chargers, but I'm I'm going to go J.K. as number one running back. I'll listen to the argument of DeAndre Swift, but not Jonathan Taylor. No, not for me. I think um, I think if Clemson's running back would have came out, he probably would have been number one over all of them. Oh, I agree. Yeah, he would be. It'd be between him and DeAndre Swift probably. But um, where do they have Swift here? Etienne. Yeah, they got him going in the first round. And he's only 5'9". J.K. is two inches taller. Weighs the same. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't think I'd put Swift in the first round. If, if J.K. is not in the first, then there shouldn't be any running backs in the first. Well, again, I'd go with Taylor. But I, I put, Again, I put Taylor over Swift. All right. I don't know. I, I, I watched probably more Taylor than I did Swift. but Sure. We played him toys. But I wouldn't. But I wouldn't put. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not putting any running backs up high in the first round. And if Taylor sneaks in there, okay, fine. And again, I, I think J.K. Dobbins going in the second round is uh, amazing for a running back. Okay. If, if you're good enough to get drafted in the second round, 
in today's NFL at running back, you are a stud. All right, let's move on. Uh, this Moving one, on. This one surprises me. They got Malik Harrison going early third round. That pick 70. Thoughts? Wow, I actually, I actually thought that would probably be lower, like fifth round. Right, um, I was, I was, I was surprised too. I was thinking four, five, six. But the kid is a physical freak, six three, two forty five. Uh, I forget his forty time, but he's up there, like a four five, a four six. <clears throat> For a big dude, and yeah, he can I mean, jump, and he was money. I mean, what he's a. Leading tackler the last two years. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, and I think he's so consistent. I, I think he's going to be one of those guys that has a nice long career. Just like I mean, he was never Ohio State's, I don't think, best, like flashiest. Like, wow, you got to watch this guy play. Mm-hmm. But he was the most consistent. And I think that's the type of NFL player he'll be. I don't think he's going to be a perennial pro bowler. But I think he's going to have a job for about 10 years. Um, yeah. and get a bunch of tackles. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I think uh I think if he goes in the third he should he should uh be super thankful. Um and he's just super quiet. You you don't really know much about him, even though he's at Ohio State for four years. Um you don't really know much about him. You know, he's just he doesn't talk. Mm-hmm. But uh he shows up on the field. But uh so this one, this is probably the most controversial. If you thought I was ripped, all jacked up about uh, J.K., Damon Arnett, third round, pick number 79. I'm calling horse shit on that. Um, I, I don't know. That's what all the experts are saying. I thought he was projected to be... Um, after Akuda talk, I thought uh, Mel Kuyper said he projected them like uh, in the second round. He did. Yeah, he did say that. What and what pick you got him at now? Seventy nine it was third round. Yeah, and I thought Kuyper said like you know early second round, um, and like was on the border with first round. So I, I think Akuda was right in asking the question. Definitely. I mean, and then some of the numbers that I think you sent me on different tweets and things about what, uh, what our nets like cover percentage was and, you know, Mm -hmm. times targeted and whatever, just amazing. And he's a, you know, he was always red ass and let his, he let his mind mess him up more than anything. But the guy balled out that last year was amazing uh, for him. Personally, I think. Oh yeah, he, uh, as a as a as a as a guy entering the draft and as a person, probably. Right. And good on him. Uh, third round. I mean, you get a steal at third round. Jeff Okuda is. Uh, he's a gamer. I mean, uh, Arnett's a gamer, of course. Okuda is. Um, right. But but Arnett's uh, that guy always surprises me. I always underestimate him, and he always. Exceeds my expectations. Yeah, what do you have? Like, he allowed one touchdown this year in coverage, and they got him listed as the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ninth best quarterback, cornerback in the draft. They got dudes from freaking Utah, Mississippi State, Virginia ahead of him. There might be, though. I mean, we don't see those guys play, and if they're, I mean, there are other freaks out there, um, so that, that's why I don't know if it's if it's unfair or not. I just know whoever gets him, if you get him in the third round, it's going to be a good pick. And he and he pretty much did that. He had that damn cast on for like half the season. That's right? what I was about to say. Yeah, he gets my Golden Buckeye, you know, Warrior Award for the year. Guy fucking played the whole season with a broken wrist. For Christ's sake, he's trying to that, make interceptions with it. That can't that can't uh, make you faster. No, it can't help your tackling. Can't help you make picks. Yeah. 
yeah, I, I'm going to call bullshit. And especially if Mel Kuyper was being honest with Okuda there when he said uh, that Arnett's a, a late first round, early second round, you know, then this pick number 79 that, that is seems to be the consensus is horseshit. Um, we'll see though. Again, I don't know. I don't know enough about those other guys. I bet you they got some pretty sweet film as well. Of course. Um, yeah. See where it plays out. But if I don't know how well Arnett, you know, he's always been that red ass, and they interview these guys. Hey, I'm going to take the third round pick on you. You know, they, you know, is he is he being cool mm-hmm. or is he being a prick? Well, he needs to chip off a whatever a percentage to uh, Chris Carter for talking him into coming back this year. Cause, yeah, because Arnett was in Dallas looking for an apartment to work out and get ready for the NFL draft a year ago. All right, or Arnett, we agree, definitely not a third rounder, definitely higher. Davon Hamilton, they got him. Penciled in at the third round at pick number 97, so a late third rounder. What say you? Uh, I'd say that's probably probably about right. Um, I would say that's on the, the high side. You know, I'd say maybe late third, uh, late fourth would be his range, somewhere in there. Yeah, they got him at the uh, eighth Eighth best D tackle. Um, there's some guys ahead of him that are respectable. You got Alabama guys that Raquan Davis, obviously, he's a stud. Um, right. But uh, Davon's a stud. Uh, I guess he might be right where he should be. I can't argue with that one much. All right. Uh, so no big fight there. Jonah Jackson, fourth round. At guard, pick number one thirty-two. I like it. Yeah, uh, I think I think you take a, a guard like Jonah Jackson in the fourth round. He's certainly not a first or second round talent, um, but he he's a smart kid. Uh, mm-hmm. Gets the game. I, I think he's a he's a he'd be a nice addition to the O line in the fourth round. Yeah, I that- feel that's about right. Yeah, I, I think the uh, transfer over to Ohio State from Rutger is definitely uh, helping his draft position. <laughs> uh, he might have been a free agent signing if he stayed at Rutgers. I don't know. He came pretty highly touted. He was uh, got some All Big Ten honors before coming over. So right, I, I think he would have. I don't even know if he improved his stock anymore, but he solidified it. Well, he was on TV every week at Ohio State. Right, <laughs> not not at Rucker. Um, I will call bullshit on the uh, Michigan guy Bredesen ahead of him. They got they got Jonah Jackson at the ninth best guard. Um, so we'll see. And then they got Runyon from Michigan as well, right after him at number ten. So, and then they got Caesar Ruiz. I believe that's pretty high up there. Yeah, I'll I'll check on him later. Um, this one, I don't know. This one's curious to me. Fourth round, pick number one forty three, KJ Hill. This seems like a steal to me in the fourth round. I know you're a big KJ guy. You know, I've always been all over the map with with KJ. I. Always feel that I probably do with most of our positions, but maybe this one especially feel Ohio State receivers are underrated, and then they totally exceed expectations. Just like again, I probably said in the past, like like Brian Hartline did, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> like Terry McLaren did last year. Um, Michael Thomas, what what round was he drafted in? Uh, second. Um, you know, I, I just think the way that Ohio State grooms these receivers teaches them everything about the game. <laughs> and it's been going back at least since the Meyer era, even before that, the Trestle era. Um, Rick, 
even the Cooper area. We've just put a lot of studs in the in the league, right? And and they all seem to be pretty complete guys that can they can all catch, they can all they're all fast, mm-hmm. they can all block, and so you get someone like KJ Hill's a tough kid, man. Yeah, and Mister Reliable. I, I I I could see him doing doing well and. Wouldn't be afraid to take him. Where did you say he's going to fourth round? Yeah, late fourth. He, they got yeah, him ranked like 20, 20th, 21st best receiver. Yeah, that, that, you'd have to show me 21 guys better than him on game day. But, yeah, you know, maybe there's 10 better than him. But Right. The guy just on game day, he brings it. Yeah, uh, to follow you up on that uh, comparison to Mike Thomas, obviously different different types, body types anyways. Um, but 40 times, I mean, that's, I know that's what you look at a lot of times with receivers. KJ ran a 4.6, Michael Thomas ran a 4.57. So not a great difference there. Not enough, in my opinion, to uh, knock KJ down to the fourth round and late fourth at that. Yeah. And he's got I mean he's got really good hands and Yeah. Like you said, I mean he's their all time leading pass catcher, right? Yeah. He knows how to get open. You don't become the all time pass receiver at Iowa State <laughs> if you don't know how to get open. And you got good hands, you don't drop the ball. Mm-hmm. He's made his share of big plays in his career at Iowa State too. You know, Penn State. Um, Clemson game. He had a, he had a few huge catches. Um, yeah, the kids kids got a highlight reel that that uh, I'll put up against just about anybody. You may not be you'll flashy. See, you'll see him get drafted to Tampa and go down there with Brady and Gronk. There you go. And Brady yeah. Brady will be in his ass. Yeah, teaching him how and he'll have eight hundred yards and seven touchdowns. Yeah, season. he's he's a Wes Welker type. Yeah, uh, and that's where a lot of people. Um, before the the Brady trade, a lot of people were projecting him to New England. He beat. They said he'd fit in perfect as a slot receiver there. See, I ought to go into this. Right, we could be doing this for a living, Sean. I'm telling you, I know. Forget this podcasting gig. So yeah, th- that's... call me up, coaches. I got all kinds of shit. Yeah, those are the Buckeyes projected to be drafted. Um, so. Nice to see a lot of people, or all of them, are, are drafted before the fifth round. You know, that, that kind of speaks to the quality of the, of the players. But then I got an issue with some of these guys that weren't even invited to the combine. And I don't know who the fuck makes up these invitations, but I'd like to have a word or two in a dark room. Uh, Brandon Bowen, five-year guy, dealt with some injury issues with the broken leg, um, but came back and had a strong senior year. I'd like to see him get a good shot. Obviously, these guys will be free agent signings after the draft. But uh, B.B. Landers, dude is a space eater in the middle. That's the one that I can't believe. Just just on his tape alone, and I don't even yeah. know how well B.B. do at a combine, um, other than I'm sure his bench is probably pretty good, mm-hmm. his bowling ball. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that guy... If you're in the AFC North mm-hmm. and you need to stop the run, a guy like B.B. Landers is the guy you want. I, I think he's going to be a great pickup uh, on somebody's team. Right. And he will eventually play on Sunday. He might, be, he might start out practice squad or something, but he's mm-hmm. eventually going to play. Yeah, and this one it, this one really blows my mind. is Jay Sean Cornell. Uh flexibility this guy can play any position on the line he came right. in as a dn five star out of minnesota um yeah dealt with a little bit of injury issues early on but he had a great senior year you know and like i said he can play if you want like a all, the nfl right now is all about flexibility and interchangeable guys you know that can be moved around that's him right yeah, I mean, he spent half his career done, half a tackle. It yeah. seems like he'd go back and forth every year, wherever right. we were 
week. Yeah. He came and in in the Rushman in and, package. And, and, he, and he'd go in and he'd, he'd make the difference. For yeah, sure. Yeah, I've always, always been a Cornell fan. He's, he what, he goes about 280, 290. Mm-hmm. That's probably a little light to be a tackle in the NFL, I'm guessing. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, but the NFL is going to more, it's a passing game. So does the NFL incorporate like Ohio State, like Rushman packages? You think they would. They I mean, might. The NFL's even more pass happy than college. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they they bring in some, some rush D tackles, interior guys that are pass rushers, you know, on third and long. For sure, they used to be ends in college and got fat. Oh well, Jalen Holmes, remember him? He was a DN. They moved yeah. him. He's at Minnesota. They moved him down into a uh, tackle. So he's made that really? transition. Yeah, I love some Jalen Holmes. Hell yeah! And then the last guy that didn't get an invite to the combine is Rashad Berry. Again, interchangeable, flexible guy with a lot of upside. That's Rashad Berry. He played both sides of the of fucking upside, ball. But, yeah, but show me a bunch of good tape of Rashad Berry. There isn't a ton. It's going to get you invites to the combine. And yeah, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but you can't invite everybody to the combine either. Well, yeah, and this lack of pro day is hurting all four of these guys. Agree. You know? So hopefully they catch on and... and I guess the upside, looking at it from a player's perspective, is uh, when you're a free agent after the draft, you get to choose. Typically, if you know a few teams will call you or call your agent, and you get to choose from those teams versus the draft where you are chosen by a team. You know, so you can kind of pick where you want to go. But uh, yeah, anyway. Well, don't they usually like call you in for a workout, a private workout, or something yeah. like that, or? Right. Well, most of them will come and see you at your pro day, and if they like what they see, then they'll do the the um, uh, workout, the private workout stuff. Yeah. So that was a 2020 draft. Um, we'll see how things shake out Thursday night. And it's plan on being a big, big night and a huge recruiting tool for the Buckeyes. So, social media team will be all over that for sure, especially early. That's what I tell you know all these guys up here. All you know, it's Ohio State bagman cheating, whatever. Like no, you go to Ohio State because pretty much at every position, if you're a starter at that position, you got a really good chance of playing on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Almost everywhere, like you said, you're you're mad because the uh, couple of these guys didn't get invited to the combine. That are, again, at least going to make practice squads. They're going to get some type of contracts. I don't even know if they'll make the fifty-three man roster or whatever the number is now, but um, they can all go play football if they want. Mm-hmm. And now with the XFL and stuff, actually, you, you, they'd probably go to one of those if. Well, they just shut down. Oh, did they? Yeah, like a week ago. Like forever. Who knows. See if uh, <laughs> see if old uh, what's his name can drum up some more money, some sponsorships. Uh, maybe that'd be you know. Cause I'll bet you when that league's around, I bet you that really cuts into the NFL practice squads. You yeah. know the quality of yeah. guys yeah. that you can get on there. You just added a whole other. You know those guys. Hey, do you want to be on the practice squad, mm-hmm. or do you want to be the star on the XFL team? Right, yeah. We'll see if Vince will bring it back. Yeah, I think the coronavirus really, well, obviously it cut their season short, so they get, didn't get to have, like, uh, their championship or anything. So that hurt them for sure. But I got a couple of uh, bets for you. Need your opinion on all right. this first one I jumped all over as soon as I saw it. So Bet Online has some first round uh, NFL draft wagers. This one total players from Ohio State drafted in round one under two and a half, minus 800, over two and a half, plus 425. 
your take? Well, I mean, the odds on the over, I mean, they're pretty much telling you that only two are going in the first round. It's a long shot um, if anyone gets taken. I mean, to me, only two are going to get taken. I don't think... um, Because there's always a couple guys that these analysts never think about that are... Right. That are going to jump up and take spots. I, I think I think Ohio State ends up with two. Mm. I do. Or you don't think there's might be uh, somebody un, underrated, underestimated? I, like, I, a JK they possibly, but I mean JK or Arnett could jump in there um, with the right team, and if they're really high on them, I just I don't see it. I think the safe money is is under. Okay. Well, I took the over, so hope you're wrong. Well, you threw that away. <laughs> Hopefully, what's your next one? Hopefully, you make it up here. <laughs> yeah, well, we might, actually. First round, who has more first round picks? Clemson, plus one half. Ohio State, minus a half. Um, Clemson, plus a half, is minus 350, so a huge favorite there. And then the Buckeyes, minus a half, plus 225. What do you think? I can't even comment on that. I'll I'll defer to you because I don't know who Clemson has going in the draft. All right. One second, I'll tell you. I'll tell you projections. I can tell you. Come on, cocksucker. So they probably got two rock-solid first-rounders and a guy that's maybe a little bit higher ranked than us. They got a receiver, I think. Okay, Clemson has Isaiah Simmons is the only guy projected in the first round. T. Higgins, the receiver, they got him early second round. A.J. Terrell, the corner, early second round. That's Hold it. Was your question first rounders or the entire draft? First round. Plus or minus a half. So, this NFL projection has Simmons, the only first rounder, then the uh, receiver in the corner, early second round. So they could mm. sneak in, right? To late first. So, which way you lean in there? Well, well, I don't know. Money scares me. What do they know? Sounds like they know those kids are going in the first round for Clemson. Right? Isn't that the way that reads? Sure, to me, yeah. Minus 350 in favor of Clemson. So, yeah. Buckeyes would need to get three, most likely. Well, they they could win with two. If uh, Simmons is the only guy. Right. So it's doable, but it's fucking way too close. T. Higgins is pick number 34. And A.J. Terrell is 36. But after that, nobody's even close. So there's no way they're getting more than three. I don't know. Could have may have bumped Arnett up for you. He may have... Yeah. Pushed it over. That could be an NCAA investigation over this. You guys are colluding. I don't know. I don't know if I want to take this uh, this pick. Two twenty. I did read an article that the draft usually um, is usually about a million dollars um, that are bet during the NFL draft. And this year, since the coronavirus and it's online, they're expecting like twenty twenty five million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because nobody's been able to bet for a month. Exactly. <laughs> I'll be in. So here's some interesting uh, wagers as well. First round, Big Ten players versus Alabama players. Uh, they don't have a. They don't have. What the fuck's a padlock mean? 
because you can't bet on Alabama. It's locked up. Anyway, uh, Big Ten players was minus 240. Whatever. Big Ten players versus what? Alabama players? Yeah. Who else in the Big Tens? How many people's Bama sent? Brett Wakeman, Judy. They probably got a no lineman stud. Yeah. They got, oh fuck, they got like two, four, six. They got six dudes in the first wow. round. Yeah. Projected anyways. You got two receivers, a corner, a tackle. You got two, uh, uh, you got a safety. So, a little bit of everything. Tua with that 13 on the wonder leg is a question mark to me. Sure. And the hip, I don't take him. Uh, dude, Whenever he's... They were talking about second or third. Five surgeries? We only know about the two ankles and the hip. What's the other two? You know? Is it an elbow? Is it a shoulder? Fuck. That's scary shit. If I'm an NFL team, I'm backing off of that. I don't give a shit what he's done on the field. With the 13 Wonderlack? Yeah, that's that's not a, a bonus. Now, I'd take a third-round flyer on him in a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if he's still out there. Definitely. Maybe even second, but I'm not taking a top, top five pick. It's just... Yeah. You got to take the money. Right. That, that's a high risk, high reward. I know sometimes you got to do that. They talked a lot about it up here um, with Detroit. Should they... They get the third pick, I think. Should they take Tua? Yeah, they're projected to take Okuda, though. I would... Well, after they got rid of that uh, Slay or whatever, mm-hmm. that writing's on the wall. I, I think they're locked into Okuda now. Oh, yeah, I think you have to be. All right, so let's uh, let's look at this 2021 uh, NFL draft. So let's assume that there's a normal college football season this fall um full slate of games playoffs the whole nine yards uh, let's assume nothing changes and we, we live in a perfect world oh god i miss it what they got an 18 playoff <laughs> yeah i don't think they're going to get that this year but this would be the first opportunity for the next five years um so let's project we don't need to put these guys in order or anything by round, but let's just talk NFL talent. Who who will be in the draft next year? That's a buck. Oh gosh, should be pretty easy, right? Yeah, I mean, just about everybody. <laughs> I will I mean, say, Sean, Sean Wade and Fields could be. Two top um, five picks next year. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have uh, on the O line Mumford and Myers and uh, what's his name? Wyatt Davis. Davis. They're all going to go. Olave. I'm. I'm guessing goes. Yeah. On the defensive side of the ball, you're going to have Cooper gone. Yep. He's going to have to be gone. Um, Tyreek Johnson, I think, will be eligible. Tyreek Johnson could play himself into a nice draft pick this year, I feel. Maybe. One-year starter, though, I guess. I guess that corner doesn't matter. Um, no, not uh, the end. The end? Smith. Tyreek Smith. Oh, not, yeah. Not Johnson. Okay. Yeah, so I'm talking uh, still on the D line there. Mm-hmm. T- Tyreek Smith, I think, does. 
Um, not sure who's eligible uh, on the tackles. I'm drawing a blank right now. I can tell you. Um, there's Togi. So uh, seniors this coming season are Haskell Garrett, Antoine Jackson. Uh, juniors are Jerron Cage and Tommy Togiai. So, yeah, Togiai could go. And so could two of those other guys. Tron Vincent could. Um, but that's, Is he going to be eligible? Yeah. He's, oh, wow. He was a redshirt sophomore. I don't know if he'll be ready. I don't know, think he's so. He's just really going to be making his way into that rotation. Yeah, I don't think so either. So I'm hoping we get two more years with him. But mm-hmm. at some point, Tehran Vincent goes. Yep. Um, I hope. I'm guessing all the linebackers next year. Yeah. Yeah. You got Borland, Werner. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if they're going to get drafted. Uh, Browning, if he goes, will get drafted. Definitely, yeah. Werner will get drafted. I don't know if Borland will get drafted. Those guys are all seniors, so they got to go. Hilliard, if he hangs around. Uh, Bra- I thought Browning could stay another year. No, he's a senior this year. Oh, because he didn't redshirt. He didn't redshirt, red shirt, yeah. Yeah. Um, those are the only linebackers that can go. Hilliard, if he stays, actually, Hilliard probably won't make the pros if he stays. He might make the yeah. combine if he goes and has a good year somewhere. Mm. Secondary. Um, the secondary, Wade will be a first round pick, and yeah. I don't think anyone else will leave in the secondary next year. Unless someone really shines. Mm hmm. They might start to emerge, but I don't know if any of them are just going to come in, have a great year, and go straight to the pros. Well, we we uh, speculated last year that Wade was going to go, and he he came back after one year I th- starting. I, I still think Wade would be a first rounder this year. I bl- I believe it. Yeah, I, I think he would have been a little later, but yeah, definitely twenty twenty third somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But he's probably playing himself into a, a top five pick. Mm-hmm. Coming back. Right. Yeah, you got uh, Master Teague could go. Probably won't because of the injury. Um, yeah. Ruckert could go. Not sure a tight end never leaves early from Ohio State. And uh, the punter, Chrisman, bottle flipper. Do they draft punters in that? Or do they just pick them up on free agency, work a bunch of them out, and say, all right, you're a punter? They got them projected at seventh round, so maybe it's one or the other, yeah. Take you late, or we'll uh, check you later. Right. So, yeah. Anyway... The projections as of right now that I'm seeing online is a huge draft class for the Buckeyes. Um, so really only, as of right now, two first-rounders with Fields and Wade, but those are early, early first-rounders, like top tens. I think Munford, he'll be healthy 100%, hopefully. He could work his way into the first round. Right now they got him early second. At pick 35. Wyatt Davis, I think, should be much higher. I would almost put him into this, the first round. They got yeah, Meyer. I mean, I, I think I would to Mumford, Davis, and Meyer. They got Myers I, at I'd freaking. Be, I'd, be amazed. I'd be amazed if they don't, if they make it out of the second round, any of them. They got Josh Myers at the fourth round. I totally disagree with that. Yeah, he's. And, and that's like I said, that's why these kids, why are we getting the number one in guards and tackles in the country because if you play at Ohio State you play on Sunday yeah. look every position the only so three of them are going to go pro next year and the other two they'll be going pro in a couple years themselves yeah. between MPF and uh, 
Paris Johnson and could the lobby going? Harry Miller? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's look at the NFL right now, coach. You got fucking Jamarco Jones, M- Michael Jordan starting in the NFL for teams. These guys, we called them slappies that, you know, when they were on the team, they sucked. Like, they're the most irritating guys because they're always getting penalties, allowing sacks, you know. When I go back and watch the old Buckeye games when they were playing, they're fucking, those guys are like laying down. <laughs> Jumping off sides, fuck. So yeah, I think Munford could squeeze into the first. Davis into the first. Olave definitely could squeeze into the first round. We expect. I'm interested to see. I mean, I'm like that might be the most intriguing player on the team for me this year. Um, the olive man. I'm hoping he just lights it up. You think the olive uh, is in for a big year? I'm, I'm really, I'm really hoping so. You know, the the year, the year and a half he's had for us. And then the way it ended last year, uh, and I think the kid worked so hard, and just seems like like a good dude, and he's got all this young talent. He's the boss in that room now, and so he not only needs to be a total baller, but he needs to be a amazing leader. And I think he's got that. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he'll make team captain this year. You would hope. I mean. Uh... He almost had a thousand yards last year. He had eight fifty, twelve TDs. That's a monster number. Uh, Twenty eighteen didn't do much. Pretty much all of his stats were from the Michigan game, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, this coming out party. He puts together a thousand yard season with double digit touchdowns and uh, fifty receptions or more. Definitely. Well, and I think, you know, after he dropped it, he's like, I'm going to be the best receiver in the country next year. I don't think anybody's going to outwork Chris Olave this year. Right. I agree. He's on a mission. Your boy, uh, Tough Borland, they got penciled in here at the third round. Really? Pick 85, yeah. Well, what do I know? That's what I've been asking myself for years. Uh Yep. You ain't gonna be the first guy I've been wrong about. Gosh, I love the guy too. Hate the to bag on you all the time, tough. <laughs> NFL player, that's all. Let's hope for let's hope he has a good fucking year. This guy seemingly hasn't had a good season in Ohio State, right? Tough? Yeah. I know, wouldn't I I mean I'd like nothing more than to see Tough have hundred and fifteen tackles, you know, fourteen for a loss. Four sacks, two picks. Play every down. Scoop, scoop and score. Play every down. Come in on third down. Yeah, I agree. I would. I will want nothing more than that. I will eat badly. Eat that crow. Mm-hmm. I mean his his first year starting was his best year. Yeah. Yeah, in uh, 2017, let's see, he redshirted in 16. 2017, he had 58 tackles and a sack. That's about it. 2018, the year of the horrible defense, he actually had more tackles, 67. Um, Three sacks, two forced fumbles, probably his best year. Last year, 55 tackles, a sack, and a pick. So, oh, he, yeah, had the pick for 42 yards. Um, so, yeah, let's let's uh, let's uh, put our our positive energy behind Tough. Let's let's get him bumped up into like late second round. I mean, all Tough has to do is drop like two tenths off that 40, oh, and God. I don't know about the track 40. But the, the game speed, 40. Right. He just when he's, when he's in a full-out sprint, he looks slow out there compared to others. Yeah, it's a big problem for him. Uh, maybe he should not wear pads and a helmet on field. How's that sound? 
I don't know. Maybe it's his running style. Maybe he just looks like he's slow. Yeah, he kind of lumbers a bit. Yeah. Uh, Werner, though, they got coming in after Borland. That's surprising to me. Late, That's a mistake. Yeah, I agree. Uh, late third round. Uh, he's definitely much faster and and uh, probably the same size, right? Like 240. Yeah, somewhere in there. Maybe 230, 235. Yeah, I'll take fucking Werner any day. Yeah, he's fast. He can cover tight ends um, sometimes. <laughs> he's done really well. He's improved a lot. He, had, he uh, was all over that, uh, what's his name, Fryermuth, Penn State last year. Yeah, he shut down some good guys. He just mm-hmm. that one, that year when the whole defense fell apart, he just got he got torched a few times. Yeah. Oh, but and I thought he got a bad rap. You know, I've always had a man crush on Werner as well. Mm-hmm. The neck. From, from seeing from seeing his tape. You love guys with in, a neck in high school. They're like a huge neck. <laughs> got a neck that Rachel Maddow would be jealous of. <laughs> Goes on for days. Definitely. You're big. But yeah, that I I I think Werner will be a better pro than has more potential, more upside with Werner. hmm Definitely more tools. Um Master Teague they got there in the third round. We'll see how he bounces back from injury. Mm, I would have said that, you know, like halfway through the season last year. Third round for running back for me is still pretty high. That means you're effing stud. And right now, I I was leaning towards Master Teague's freaking stud. I, I'm reset to zero. I don't know what Master Teague is. You got to show me something again. Ooh, I just found Tufts forty time. Cover your ears. <laughs> Four seven one. Yikes. It's better than what it, it looks like a four eight. <laughs> I can't decipher the difference, but yeah, I think I, I I don't think Teague comes out next year. I think he he needs to stay the full four or five. Um, yeah, yeah. To, to put him in a third rounder right now, I think that's optimistic, and yeah. not that he can't be, but yeah. I, I haven't seen anything. I saw glimpses, and then I saw some pretty shittiness right so yeah i'm gonna call bullshit on this uh baron browning ranking at fifth round pick 133 you can't tell me i mean we'll wait and see what he does this year but this guy's a fucking monster man so athletic he's just been underused he should be picked before werner and borland i think so he's definitely faster um more athletic. He's he's really a rush end, in my opinion, or an, out, an outside linebacker in a 3-4 that blitzes the quarterback, you know. Um, he's an athletic freak. Yeah, I, he, he had five sacks last year. Let that dog hunt. Exactly. You can't have him out there in space, you know, reading and reacting. you got to give him a fucking job to do. Kill the quarterback. Yeah, he's fast. He closes. Um, I, yeah. Unfortunately, I blame these fucking previous coaches like Billy Davis and fucking Shiano for not using him right. You know, they tried to make him a tough Borland, you know, middle linebacker, be the quarterback of the defense. No, that's not what he does. You watch any of his fucking high school tape, he comes off the edge and kills people fast, quickly. He doesn't play middle linebacker and like read shit. You're just wasting him. It's like putting a tiger in a cage, Sean. You don't want to do that. You've seen a lot of that lately, haven't you? More than I more than I'd like to admit. Same here. I don't feel like I'm better better for it. You're not. So anyway, Baron Browning is a tiger, and uh, he should not be caged by stupid coaching. So yeah, I think next year's class at the NFL draft is going to be a monster class. I got two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 12 picks going in the draft. 
but that's counting the punter, so we'll go 11. I just did some quick math on my fingers and yeah. toes. Yeah, I, I think it's about 12. Yeah. How'd that work out with your, uh, your you have uh, six toes? Yeah. Oh, you never saw that? I got the extra pinky toe? Ew. I got a beef with that fucking punter, too, by the way. Not to go off on a tangent, but I will. Who's this fucking guy I think he is? Just like a week or two ago, him and his girl decide to run off and elope and get married, okay? No problem with that whatsoever. They fucking run off to Hawaii for a honeymoon. Cheap tickets, baby. Yeah, cheap tickets, but we're supposed to... What does stay at home mean? Means go to Hawaii? Yeah. Everybody else in the fucking country is locked down. Yeah, well, some people are locked down in Hawaii. Apparently. That's bullshit. It's probably something like, well, my parents have a timeshare, so they're quote-unquote owners yeah. uh, of it. So that's our place, and we're getting locked down in our place. <laughs> right, yeah. I just, I've, I've had an issue with the punter, the bottle flipper, um, because he didn't have such a great year last year, and especially in big games uh, last season. He was great his first two years, but last year... I don't know, he kind of got full of himself or whatever. But um, he was less than less than perfect and less definitely not uh, up to snuff. A few big games last year, he did not come to play. Did have the big fake punt against Wisconsin that actually yielded us no points because uh, Fields ended up fumbling. But um, a couple of games, I think it was the Penn State game I'm thinking of, where he just, he, you know, it's a close, tight game. We only won twenty eight seventeen, and uh, he he shanked a couple, you know, hit a couple off the side of his foot. It's just garbage. It's like, dude, it on. should happen. That kid's been fucking hell of a punter for us. I give that kid a break, and yeah. Who wouldn't want to be Drew Christman? He's flipping bottles because he's going to be popping collars next year and have like a 20-year career punting in that league. We'll see. I hope so. Be the next Nugent. Great kicker out of Ohio State. What's our uh, Aussie doing? Oh, uh, uh, Cam Johnson. He's, yeah. He uh, plays for the Eagles. He's good. Yeah, I would want to be the kicker of the punter, man. What a life. Yeah, it is pretty fucking sweet. Punter might be better than kicker. I mean, yeah, you might get blocked once in a while, but fuck it, that was someone else's fault. And if you fumble it, it's usually someone else's fault. They threw it over your head, you know? (laughs) Right. Once in a while, you might bobble one. Big deal. Unless it's in like the Super Bowl or something. The kicker's a little more pressure. You got to hit that 54 yarder with three seconds on the clock. Oh, shit. But they, that's why they pay the kickers a little more than a punter, right? I bet they don't pay punters much. Yeah. Well, not if you're getting drafted in the seventh round. What else? Anything else we need to cover? I don't think so. I did want to mention that Michigan has set up a hell of a pipeline. To uh, Massachusetts, the state of two four-star prospects. So good job there. I can't wait for the season. I think I think we're going to be right where we always are, and I think Michigan might regress a game or two down from their ten-win seasons, nine, ten, and that what Michigan wins every year nine games. Mm-hmm. Right on the button. They could, they could go down to eight. This might be an eight year for them. Oh, could be. Uh, I mean, you just read they're they're losing three O linemen to the draft, mm-hmm. and they had their five star quarterback, 
and people's Jones and they mm. couldn't do anything. Right. So now you lose all those guys and somehow that offense is going to get better. Okay. Yeah. First year quarterback starter, uh, bunch of new old linemen. Yeah. Um, you lost two of your top receivers. I think they got a bunch of running backs. They tout mm -hmm. their defense will probably be good. Well, these projections right now have DPJ going in the third round. I think that's a, I think that's a great, I think it's a steal. Oh yeah. I would, I would, I would put him in the second round personally. Uh, they got Ruiz, the center, going in the second round. Uche in the third. Then DPJ. Fourth round, Bredesen. Fifth round, Runyon. Sixth round, basically their secondary. Plus Shea Patterson. Lavert Hill, Kalik Hudson, Patterson, and uh, another O-lineman, Onwenu, a guard. Oh, yeah. Seventh so round. They got four old linemen going in that draft. There's no way they're getting better. <laughs> yeah. And a first year quarterback starter. Yep. The guys on D, I don't think they're going to miss much. They bring their best guy back from the secondary. Mm -hmm. Those other guys weren't that good. <laughs> we torched them the last two years. Yeah. Um, Uche was good, though. It's all right. That was a third rounder. In the same ranking as our linebackers, according to this projection. Yeah, well, I I think their D will still be solid. They got a good D line coming back. They yeah. got solid linebackers. Yep. And they got that one stud in the secondary. I don't know if he's a safety or corner or whatever. But I was listening to some um, Penn State. They lost a lot of stuff, I think. But Penn State's got a loaded freaking team. They got a bunch of recruits. Oh yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're not missing much this year. Over the last four years, they've recruited really well. Yeah, they're losing. They got dudes. Well, they're not cranking out many this year, so that means they're going to be stacked. Uh, only got four guys projected to be drafted. Uh, Gross Matos, KJ Hamler, Cam Brown, and Robert Windsor, a D tackle. So, be nice to see, uh, not see KJ Hamler running through our secondary. That'll be enjoyable. I didn't know that Cam Brown was gone. So yeah, they're they're loaded this year. I mean, their twenty twenty one mock draft has like a dozen guys on it. Oh wow! Yeah, Fryermuth, Micah Parsons, first rounders, uh, Journey Brown. Uh, who's this? Castro Fields, corner. Uh, Mustafer, the D tackle. Got a tackle, another receiver, Lamont Wade, the safety. Yeah. Yeah, this would, this would be the year to fear uh, Penn State, I think. They got a lot of NFL talent. And I and we go there, I think. Yes. Yeah, the that's going to be... The key is whether it's a night game or not. Night, oh, game, I'm, one. night game, I'm worried. Not night game, I'm not so worried. Or maybe uh, with, in the era of COVID, everything's a day game. Yeah, that could work. Or if no fans at all. <laughs> That'll fix your fucking ass. Yeah, what? Take shit back up to uh, more of an even playing field. I don't know. I love beating them in there when it's nuts. Oh, it's fun, it yeah. It ain't easy, but those are some... Yeah, but then that's where things can get a little squirrely if it's a one-score game. You get a fucking field goal blocked, and boom, you just lost. 
Well, on a game I mean, that you unless, dominated. Unless they are, uh, yeah, they might be really good this year. Who's their quarterback? They got that fucking. Uh, it's almost like the last guy, right? He runs around, and throws the ball, right? Uh, Sean Clifford. Yeah. Well, that Clifford guy, we knocked him out last year, and then that Will Levis, that big kid, came in and started whipping the ball around like he's fucking Tom Brady. <laughs> you know? Then eventually we, we squashed that, but he's like 6'4", 220. He's like a regular pro-style guy. So, obviously, Sean Clifford is like the uh, run around, you know, smaller guy. And uh, we weren't really ready for a guy with an arm. Yep, that game and that going out to Oregon. Yep, that'll be a good one. That'll probably be those, a night game. Those are the two I got circled. Those are going to be tough games. Mm-hmm. We'll see who uh, who's quarterbacking out there. I know that uh, Oregon just got that transfer from BC or whatever, but I'm not too worried about him. At least he's experienced, I guess you could say. All right, Buckeye fans, stay safe out there. That's right. Keep your masks on. Hit the site. Get your mask. Get your mask on. Uh, as always, this is a co- commercial-free podcast. Sean, do you know how hard it is to find a commercial-free podcast anymore? Turn on a podcast. You probably hear. 50 how hard is it? It is so <laughs> hard, <laughs> and it's late. As always, hit the site, thebuckeyecast.com. Find us on all of the social media. And uh, share with your friends. Hey, do us a favor. You know, forward to a friend. If you don't have any friends, forward to uh, somebody you don't know. Just make something up. Anyway, Yeah, exactly. Uh, send it to a prince in Nigeria. I don't care. As always, we appreciate you. Sean, thank you for joining us. Wait, and, you know a prince in Nigeria? Yeah, I, I'm the one that got his dad out of jail. Oh, <laughs> that's right. The whole family was locked up at one time. You get that check yet, right? They're going to send you like five million bucks. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I'm still waiting on, on that It's in shit. the mail. Yeah. Check's in the mail. Yeah, hopefully Jeff will be back soon. Uh, he was probably trimming the wrong bush this week and uh, came down with the Rona. Anyways, we will talk to you next week. Later, Sean. Peace. Later.